Welcome to Marketing Made Simple TV and to our special Christmas show. I'm Jeff Ogden. I'm usually the host of the show, but you'll see under my name right now, it says Santa. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the host of the show today. I am Santa. And we've got a special guest. We're glad to have you back today. And we've got a wonderful guest on the show, Sam Fiorella of Sensei Marketing. So let's welcome Sam to the show. Everybody. And by the way, I am the real Santa. That's the fake. <laughs> You're the real Santa? Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, good. All right, Sam. Well, it's good to have you on the show, and I'm excited. We're going to have some fun today. What's that? I look forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll, I'm going to give you the first question. We've asked every guest on the show the same first question, and it's very, very simple, Sam. It is, who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, so you can see down here, Sam Fiorella is my name. I am uh, a partner at Sensei Marketing, Inc., which is a customer experience consultancy firm based in Toronto and New York. I'm the co-author of Influence Marketing, How to Create, Manage, and Measure Brand Influencers in Social Media Marketing. Uh, and I'm a professor of marketing at uh, Seneca College here in Ontario. Very cool, Sam. So talk to us about what the, define influence marketing. What do, you, what do you think it is? What do you say it is since you wrote a book by that title? Just let's define it, what it is. Well, yeah, and I think that's a... Uh, that's an important question because everything else in terms of a discussion on influence marketing has to be based on that. Uh, for Danny Brown, my co-author and I, we define influence marketing as a brand or their advocates ability to sway the purchase decisions of their intended audience, be it prospective customers or existing customers. So we've got a lot of uh, influence tools out there like Clout and uh, some of the other peer index and some of the others out there. I mean, isn't that influence? I mean, wh how do you guys, you know, what is your relationship between influence and the so-called influence index? Uh, also a very good question. Yeah, we don't really consider those uh, tools uh, measurements of influence. They are uh, measurements of brand amplification. They're measurements of a person's ability to uh, generate a lot of noise uh, in social channels. And there could be some value to that, um, but that's a far cry from uh, definitively or measurably swaying the, a purchase decision or someone's um, uh, decision to buy or not buy a product. And, and I think that's sort of where we draw the line between the two. Clout, Peer Index, uh, Cred, any type of social scoring platform um, is really that, is, an, is a measure of amplification and the ability to engage an audience. But we don't really know if that audience is a potential customer or not, um, you know, where they were on the purchase life cycle. Um, so that's sort of the difference. For us, influence marketing really has to be a sales metric. Um, you know, who's making this, the decision to buy or not buy, and who influences those decisions. And, and that's where those products don't sort of connect for us. It's interesting, Sam. So one of the takeaways here is uh, don't overly rely on clout and peer index and cred and all those. But what do you recommend companies do instead? I mean, do you want them to go out and talk to customers more? What do they need to do? <laughs> That's funny. You know what I mean? How, how dare I think about, you know, or ask marketers to go talk to their customers? Uh, I, I don't think there's anything, I'm, I'm not saying just throw out uh, social scoring platforms. Uh, in terms of an initial uh, sort of gauge, it might be okay. But what we uh, recommend is, yes, just that. First, understand who your customers are, where they are in the purchase life cycle. Are they at the awareness stage? Are they at the uh, decision stage? Are they already a customer? Uh, are they a prospective customer? And then using social analytic tools, identify what, what's the nature of that conversation and the people that are speaking about certain issues at each one of those stages. And what you can do when you've done that is you've identified what relationships between certain people are most relevant at the various decision-making points. 
and then you can orient your marketing and your influence strategies around those relationships and around those specific conversations. You're going to have a smaller group that you're targeting, but the net result is going to be much more positive. I'm glad you brought that up, Sam, because I think this is one of the probably most poorly understood aspects of B2B marketing is how to get insights on buyers. I mean, Adele Ravella of the Buyer Persona Institute talks about why do some people with the pain buy something to solve the pain, and why do other people just live with the pain? <laughs> and how do you separate those two? And the only way to do that is to really dig and understand those buyers. So what, do you, what are your thoughts on just what is the state of B2B marketing and how well do companies do the kind of things that you advocate? Uh, well, it's not easy. And um, I think that we've made this quite clear in the book. And, you know, people that have read the book, you know, even those that have given it glowing reviews have said that this is a difficult book to read, that it takes a while to get through it uh, because of the methodologies and how in, uh, involved they are. Um, influence marketing is not a, a, a short term thing. Um, you know, certainly you can generate a lot of viral activity in a very short period of time, but that doesn't necessarily translate to sales. There's a correlation causation thing that you really need to focus on. So our, the way we structure it, and as a result, our recommendation, um, is that you should be looking at a six to 12 month strategy. The first quarter is really understanding that audience, is mapping your customers. Where are they? And then identify archetype customers at each one of these decision-making stages along that life cycle. Once you've mapped that out, then you can deploy listening tools. Now, whether you're using you know, a, uh, a Pulse Analytics by Mantis Technologies or a, a Sysimos or something like that, and start to grab that data, that, um, uh, those uh, conversations, and map them to the customer decision-making process. Another great tool is Nimble for smaller businesses uh, and, and large businesses as well, but I think their market is more small to medium-sized businesses. Uh, by using a social relationship management tool, you can grab all of those conversations, start mapping them to the individuals, and uh, cross-referencing with the relationships that they have. Are they coworkers? Uh, um, you know, are they family members? Um, and then take a look at the geography. That's usually a six-month process right there. And with that data, you can now start to create campaigns to target specific segments, measure the results of those campaigns against those archetype customers, and then you've got yourself a baseline. Now, the, the campaigns that Danny and I have run have typically taken a year uh, of understanding this before we can start to see big results. Um, the difference, uh, of course, that is a, that could be six months to a year. The difference is that at that point, we're getting almost immediate hits and measurable responses. So it takes some time, but that's generally the process that we recommend. That's interesting, uh, uh, Sam. Obviously, one of the takeaways here is that marketing takes time, so don't uh, try to push it too much. Let's talk a little, bit, a little bit about your book, and I think we have a nice offer here at the top of the screen uh, for our landing page from your book. Let's talk about influence marketing. Why did you write it? That, that's the first question. <laughs> Uh, that, that's a great question as well. Um, the it was really two factors uh, that sort of played into the decision making process. Number one, uh, both Danny and I were pretty vocal about our disdain, <laughs> to put it mildly, for the focus that marketers were putting on influence marketing. So it was a subject that he and I uh, were very passionate about. Um, and one that we were very vocal about. And each one of us got a, a fair amount of play and publicity in the media. We were constantly being interviewed by um, magazines and, and newspapers and radio programs about our, our, our thoughts on it and why it was uh, taking us in the wrong direction as marketers in the social space. And uh, sort of parallel with that, we were being requested by clients. They were saying, what is this influence marketing thing? What is this clout thing? How do we make it work for us? There seems to be some uh, some merit from what we're hearing, you know, all the buzz around it. 
And so we experimented with it, and it failed for us. And in fact, that's the first chapter of the book, um, how we tried traditional influence marketing approaches and how they all failed, and how we almost accidentally fell upon the methodology that we outline in the book that was successful and then was used for other clients. Um, so it was really out of a little bit out of frustration, a little bit out of personal experience with our clients. And then at about that same time that all of that was happening, we met with a phenomenal uh, editor or acquisitions editor at Pearson. And she said, you know what, you guys, you're, you're clearly making some progress in this space. You should write about it. Um, you know, six months later, a book was produced. Well, Sam, I congratulate you on that book. Uh, we've had many authors on this show, like uh, Daniel Pink and Guy Kawasaki and Jay Bear. So <laughs> it's good to have another good author on the show. Now, one of the things you told me is, and I haven't yet had a chance to read it, so I apologize, and I certainly intend to, but it's rather a, a meaty tome, right? There's a, it's, it's not something you sit down and go through in an hour. Talk, talk to us about that and how it's been received in the market and uh, just kind of why you did it that way as well. Yeah, that's very interesting and it was a struggle, I have to admit. It was a struggle with the publisher and it was a struggle between Danny and myself. Um, when it, it is a meteor book, so first of all in terms of the reaction, um, we've had overwhelmingly positive reaction. If there's somebody that's hated it, they've not said it to us nor written about it, so I'm sure there might be somebody out there, but we've not heard it. So far, you know, knock on wood here, everything has been quite positive. The, the response has definitely been almost unanimously that this is a book that will probably have a shelf life of two to three years or more because technology, natural language processing, and some of the other technologies we reference are just now coming into their own and that the methodology will move um, uh, almost a bit predictive in terms of what's coming. And, and that was the plan. Uh, when Danny and I decided to write this book, we said we can't write the type of marketing book that you read on an airplane ride between, you know, New York and, um, you know, California someplace. You really, um, we wanted something that was going to uh, have substance and give people real actionable metrics, real actionable benchmarks, um, and a blueprint to say that I'm, I'm, I can see myself in this and I now have an actual strategy that I can run with. And the greatest compliment, quite frankly, today is, wow, Sam, that book took me, you know, three weeks and I've got notes scribbled all over it and I got all kinds of earmarks of things that I want to go back to and delve into a little bit further. So that is really music to our ears because that was definitely the intent. Um, I think the greatest outcome um, has been that uh, universities like Georgetown has uh, told us that they picked up the book and are turning it into a curriculum uh, for themselves. I I'm actually uh, teaching, I've been requested to teach th this curriculum that's outlined in the book as a postgraduate program uh, in the marketing department at Seneca College here in uh, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, so again, it's we took that approach and even though the Publishers struggled with it because uh, academic books uh, don't sell as many copies as you know the more general you know 101 type marketing books. Um, but they read it and they believed in the content and they decided to support us and release it anyway. Um, and so the the pickup in the academic world and in the large enterprise uh, world that are buying you know like 500 600 books at a time and distributing it to their sales force. Uh, that's the reward that we were really looking for. So we're quite pleased with that. Congratulations. It sounds like you've, you're having some great success with it. And sometimes you got to stick to your guns. I mean, I just use the, the, remember the example of the Eagles. They wrote a song called Hotel California, and it was like six and a half minutes long. And their, the record company said, no song can be that long, can ever go to number one. And they said, well, we're not cutting it. <laughs> and it did go to number one. So it's the longest song ever to be number one. So, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you have to stick to your gun. So anyway, tell us a little bit about um, the whole concept. Where do people start with influence marketing? You know, if someone wants, wants to get involved in this, where should they begin? Where's a good place for them to go? Um, 
Well, you should start by buying Influence Marketing by Sam Fiorella and Danny Brown over at Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or wherever you buy your book. Um, I got maybe two answers there. Uh, and one that maybe surprises a lot of people, don't start with the influencer. Uh, and I think that's the biggest mistake that people make today is they try right away to identify who has the biggest social voice. And then let's get that person to talk about us or to recommend our product or our service. And because of their amplification ability, the more people that know us, the more likely that our product will sell or get some viral buzz. Uh, and so we say, forget about the influencer. Go back to the basics. Start with the customer. Understand how and why your customer makes the decisions that they do and then work backwards. Yeah, in the book, we reference it as reverse engineering the influence path. The influence path doesn't start from the influencer towards the, the consumer. It actually starts with the consumer and how they make decisions. And so you can ride that path back. Um, and what we found, and I think what you know, those of people in the audience that are going to attempt this methodology, is that when you work backwards, the people that influence purchase decisions, as opposed to just brand amplification, are not the people you initially think they are, more often than not. Um, and so I would definitely start with understanding your customer. I would start from a technology perspective. I wouldn't go to clout right away. I would go to a social relationship management tool, you know, like a OneCube or a Nimble or any of those types of software applications and start mapping the customer conversations um, that people are, whoever's in your contact database, start mapping their conversations around products and, and, and to whom they're speaking about those products and then delve down with some type of natural language processing and, and most software applications have this today uh, to identify those conversations. So start there, start with the customer, just like you know David Ogilvy always said, the best marketing you know, is uh, information, more information or accurate information about your customer. Uh, and that's really was the foundation of the methodology we developed. Uh, so number one, start with your customer. Don't start with the influencer and start with a, uh, a social relationship management tool, not an influence scoring platform. Good takeaway, some really good stuff there. So, so basically what you're saying is go talk to your customers and when you ask them whom they trust, it might not be the person with a million Twitter followers. <laughs> so if I could just re-say it. This has been a really fascinating conversation. What? Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> my screen just went black for a second. Weird. So uh, this, I wish I had more time to talk, but we're running short on time. So I'll just ask you, if for people who want to learn more about Sam Fiorella and Sensei Marketing, where should they go and where can they learn more about you? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, well, Sam Fiorella is my Twitter handle. It's uh, my first and last name together, pretty straightforward. Sensei uh, Marketing can be found at senseimarketing.com. Our website is really more of a, of a, of a thought leadership blog uh, where myself and others within our organization and our external community are sharing best practices. So senseimarketing.com. Uh, the book and the book information can be found at influencemarketingbook.com. Um, and of course, we've got a pretty vibrant G plus community uh, called, oddly enough, Influence Marketing. Uh, there's about 4,000 people that are actively engaged in that community. So that's a great place for ongoing conversations about this topic. I want to thank Sam for being a great guest on our Christmas show, and I hope you had a fun time. And, and we really want, want to wish everyone and all our viewers a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This show is going to be our last show of 2013, so we hope you have a very wonderful and prosperous and healthy 2014. Before we go, we want to thank our sponsors. Avitage is a great content marketing company, avitage.com. Digital Ethos is educational uh, nonprofit, digitalethos.org. Communication Strategy Group is brand telling. A great guy runs that, Arthur Germain, communicationstrategygroup.com. And Watch It provides this wonderful TV on the internet platform that we use. If you go to marketingmadesimple.tv, you'll see a great article 
on how we use this product. Marketing Made Simple TV premieres every Thursday at noon Eastern, except the, the rest of this year. <laughs> so until next time, we'll see you again on Marketing Made Simple TV.